1 Corinthians chapter 7. Our text today is going to be verses 17 to 24. Verse 17. The Apostle Paul writes, But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. Circumcision is nothing. And uncircumcision is nothing. But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freedman. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You are bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Amen. Here is a very good example of why you need to read things in context. Because if you, if you just read those eight verses, was it eight, seven, seven or eight verses, in isolation, you would have no clue that this is right in the middle of a conversation, of a discussion of divorce, of marriage, and singleness, and that subject. Because he doesn't mention it there. <laughs> Um, what's going on in this chapter? What's going on is that there are some people in Corinth, because the church in Corinth was messed up, a lot of problems. There's some people in the church in Corinth who are saying that it is holier to be single and celibate rather than to be married. And so this has caused a number of issues in the church. You know, people are wondering if they should get divorced, if they should abstain from their spouses and all these things. And Paul says, no, 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 no. Being single is fine and being married is fine. It's not that one makes you closer to God than the other. To each one, God has given certain gifts. Each one is called to something different. Either one is fine, so don't be telling people to do one or the other. If you're married, you don't have to try and become single in order to be holier. If you're single, you don't have to get married in order to be holier. Either one is fine. Uh, so, in light of that discussion, Paul now wants to give us a greater theological principle, which of course applies to marriage and singleness, but it will apply to many more things in life, not just marriage. And so, it's pretty clear from this text what the main point is. He repeats it numerous times. Let each one remain in that state in which he was called. Now, don't seek to change your status or your place in life hoping that that is going to make you holier. That's the key right there. <laughs> thinking that's going to make you holier. He's saying, stay in whatever situation you are in. Another way to look at it, if you want to look at it from another view, is that Christ didn't save you to change all the circumstances around you. They are what they are. Christ saved you to change you in the circumstances in which you are in. All right? Christ didn't save single people so that they would become married. He didn't save married people so that they would become single. That's not the point. Your marital status is irrelevant to this issue. If you want to serve Christ, if you want to be holy, do it. If you're married, serve Christ. If you're single, serve Christ. Wherever you are in life, be obedient to Christ. Follow Christ. You don't have to say, well, I, if only, you know, my marriage is just, you know, I'm married to an unbeliever, you know, if, if only I could just get rid of my wife and, and be single, then, then I could really serve the Lord. Paul 
Paul says, no. <laughs> Stay where you are. Serve the Lord where you are. Your marital status doesn't make you more or less acceptable to God. And as we will see here in this text, Paul takes it further than that. And he talks about ethnicity. God doesn't care what country you're from. Um, it's not about your socio-economic status. God doesn't care about how much money you have. If your job is more Christian because, well, I, I'm, a, I'm a pastor, so well, I'm, I'm in a better position than someone who's working on computers. No. Wherever you are, serve the Lord where you are. The issue is you and your relationship to Christ, not all the circumstances around you. He says this three times, basically. Verse 17 says, But as God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. Jump to verse 20. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Verse 24. Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. That's the principle. Don't change your status. Stay where you are. Now, something that's important here to understand. When he says, stay as you are, we need to understand that that is not... How can I put this? That doesn't mean that you're forbidden to change your status. That doesn't mean that if you're single, when God saves you, well, you can't get married. That's not what it means. It doesn't mean that um, if you're a widow and God saves you, that you're not allowed to get married. Sure you are. Um, in today's text, he's going to say, if you're a slave, don't worry about it. But if you can be free, <laughs> do it. Take the opportunity. Do it. All right. When he says, don't change your status, the point is, don't change your status in order to be in, because you think that this is going to make you somehow more acceptable to God. He's saying don't change because it doesn't make any difference. I want you to follow me here. Don't change because it doesn't make any difference. Which means that if you changed, that's fine also because it doesn't make a difference. Did you just follow everything I just said there? Let me say that again. <laughs> He says, don't change. If you think that this is going to somehow make you holier with God, don't do it. Don't change. You're fine where you are. But you know, you could also change if you want to. Because it doesn't matter. Either way is fine. I'm single. And so this is the only way to serve God. No. If you want to get married, you could serve the Lord that way too. But if you want to stay single, that's fine also. Either way is fine. And Paul, look, Paul is going to talk about circumcision, right? Okay? We'll get to it in a moment. Question. Was Paul for circumcision or against circumcision? Answer. He didn't care. It doesn't matter. There were some people who said that it mattered. There were some people in the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians is entirely about this subject. There were some people who had gone to the churches in Galatia and they said, you must be circumcised. That's the only way to be accepted by God. It's not enough to believe in Jesus. You need to get circumcised and then you can be saved. And Paul throws a fit, a godly fit, and writes the book of Galatians and tells them, absolutely not. Do not get circumcised. No, don't do it. Then you're reading the book of Acts and he goes on a second missionary journey and Paul meets Timothy and he's like, oh, Timothy's a good guy. I want to take him with me on, on, uh, on, uh, on my mission trip. But Timothy was, his father was Greek, so he wasn't circumcised. And what Paul does on every one of his missionary journeys, the first place he goes, everywhere he goes, he goes to the synagogues, right? So he can't take an uncircumcised guy with him into the synagogues and start teaching. And so he says to Timothy, you know what? We should circumcise you. And he says, all right. So Paul who was just freaking out and wrote the entire book of Galatians, the most angry letter in the entire Bible, telling people, do not get circumcised. He then goes and circumcises Timothy. And you're like, what did he just do? The answer is, he could do that because it doesn't matter. 
Those people are trying to make it matter, and he says, absolutely not. But since it doesn't matter, I can do it if I want. As long as you understand what's important here. Alright? And so the Corinthians are concerned about marriage. They were saying, don't get married. You need to stay single. And Paul says, it doesn't matter. Follow the Lord wherever you are. Are you single? Be obedient to God as, as, a, as a single. Are you married? Be obedient to God. Married. Don't tell people to change. It's fine. Maybe you find yourself in a bad job. Just so difficult to serve the Lord when I'm in this job. You know, it's difficult to have a good attitude around these people. If I only had a different job, then I would really be really be able to live a holy life. And God would just really love me if I was just in a different job. And Paul in essence is saying, look, if you want to change your job because there's more money there, because it's closer to home because it's just the job that you like more. That's fine. You can change your job. But if you think that you're going to be holier just because you change your job, no. It's not going to happen. Serve the Lord where you are. You don't need to change your job. Here's the thing. God saves people in every occupation. Think of any job you want. Hasn't God saved a person who is working on computers? Hasn't God saved people who work at home? Doesn't God save people who are taxi drivers? Hasn't God saved... God has saved people in every area of life. Which means what? This is the whole, this is the whole point we we're trying to get to. Which means what? Those things are not what determine whether you're acceptable by God or not. You're, imagine if everyone who got saved said, oh, I can't have a secular job. I've got to go work at the church or something. Who's going to do all the jobs? Just the unbelievers. No. It's, it's a change in your circumstances is not necessary for you to serve God. It's not necessary for you to be acceptable. Accepted by God. And so the whole point of the passage is stay as you are. Follow Christ where you are. This doesn't mean it's wrong to change. But you don't need to change. Follow Christ. Look at verse 17. Let's, let's look at the passage. Verse 17. As God has distributed to each one, as the Lord has called each one, so let him walk. And so I ordain in all the churches. Three lessons. Number one. He says, I, I ordain this in all the churches. This is not something that I'm just telling you, Corinthians, because you're in such a mess. This is something that I tell everyone. This applies to everyone. Alright? This is a principle for all. Number two. He says, God has distributed to each one. That's a, it's a bit kind of difficult in this translation. I've read some other translations which make it a bit clear, I think. Where it says, God has assigned to each one their place. God has assigned to each one their status. All right? If you find yourself being 38 years old, half Greek, half South African, living in Athens in 2017, God has assigned that place to you. You're not there by luck. It's not chance. If you find yourself married, having two kids, having a certain amount of health, a certain amount of money, if this is where you are in life, God is sovereign over everything and He has placed you here. Number three, God is sovereign not just where, where He has placed you, but He's also sovereign over salvation. He chose when to call you. Notice He says, as the Lord has called each one. Calling is something that's going to come up again and again in this, in this section all the time. God has called certain people. All right? this, is, this is what theologians call the effectual call. The call word. This is, this is when God calls someone and wakes them up from spiritual sleep. Or when he calls to someone and says, live! And the spiritually dead person lives. All right? This is the same thing that, that Paul talks about in Romans 8, where he says, those whom God foreknew, he also predestined to make them conform 
to the image of his son and those whom he predestined he also called and those whom he called he also justified and those whom he justified he also glorified all right god calls people to himself if you're a christian god has called you all right and god calls people when he wants to call them god determines where you're going to live when you're going to live and god determines when he's going to call you okay now the Lord saved me when I was 19. He called me when I was 19 years old. Sometimes I sit and think about that. And I'm like, if only he had called me when I was 9. You know, I could have had another decade to serve the Lord. Another decade to avoid the kinds of messes along the way. But he called me when I was 19. God decides where you're going to be and God decides when he's going to call you. And God has called married people, unmarried people, widows, divorced people, people who are circumcised, people who are not circumcised, people who are slaves, people who are free, people with this job or with that job or with, from this country or from that country, and poor and rich. There's all these things which just proves the point. God doesn't save someone because of their circumstances, because of where they're from, because of... God is not a respecter of persons. Since those circumstances are not what made God call you, God put those circumstances there. Since those things are not what made God call you, those are not the things that He looks to for you to gain favor in His sight. Oh, well, that guy is from Bulgaria, so he's definitely one step up from everyone else. No, he doesn't care where you're from. It doesn't matter where you're from. That's not God's concern. So Paul says, stay where you are. Quick side note. I've got to say this. Quick side note. Because I know that people will jump on this to justify their sin. And then someone may say, oh, so if I was like dealing drugs or something when God saved me I don't need to change I can just stay like that and just keep on selling drugs right uh, no <laughs> that's not what Paul is saying yeah um, <laughs> when God calls you he calls you to himself he calls you to holiness he's not calling you to sin all right so if someone was a, a prostitute and God saved them they should stop doing that. If someone was selling drugs and God saved them, they should stop doing that. If you're sinning, you should repent and stop it. But here we're talking about things like marital status, economic status, social status. And it says, God doesn't care. He's going to give an example here of uh, things that God doesn't care about. <laughs> First thing he's going to talk about is circumcision. Look at verse 18. He says, was anyone called while circumcised? Let him not become uncircumcised. Was anyone called while uncircumcised? Let him not be circumcised. He says, are you a Jew? Are you a Gentile? God doesn't care. It uh, makes no difference. Uh, in the early church, like I mentioned before in Galatia, there were a lot of people who thought that it did make a difference. And they were, read Galatians, read uh, Acts 15. There were a number of people who said, you, you've got to be circumcised to be accepted by God. And Paul said, nope, that's not at all true. Paul here also says, are you circumcised? Don't become uncircumcised. Now, I first read that and I was like, that's kind of weird. I don't, think that, I don't think that's a thing. But apparently it is. I'm not going to give you the details, but let me just tell you, in the ancient Roman world, a lot of people kind of looked down on Jews, didn't like the Jews too much, kind of thought they were unsophisticated. And so there were a number of places in Roman society, such as gyms or public baths, where you would have men who would gather together there and do whatever it is that they would do, and they would talk politics, they would talk business, they would do all these things, but they were naked. And so you could tell if a guy was a Jew. And so there were some Jews wanting to get rid of their Jewishness, 
and who wanted to be accepted by the Romans and there was some medical surgical procedure in which you could hide your circumcision. That's all I'm going to tell you. We'll just leave it at that. So, Paul says, don't go. Either way. Don't get circumcised if you're uncircumcised. Don't get uncircumcised if you're circumcised. Why? Verse 19. Circumcision is nothing. And in case you're saying, aha, but I'm uncircumcised. And uncircumcision is nothing. Neither one. They're both nothing. We don't care. What matters? But keeping the commandments of God is what matters. Doesn't matter. Either way, God doesn't care. One of the main themes of the New Testament is that there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. What matters, he says, is keeping the commandments of God. And this is not some kind of legalistic statement. He's not saying that's how you get saved. He's saying what matters is to obey God. Doesn't matter if you get circumcised. Doesn't matter if you're a Jew, if you're a Gentile. Obey God. Obey God. In the book of Galatians, where this subject about circumcision comes up again and again, Paul gives two very similar statements. Listen to these. Galatians 5, 6, he says, In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. Galatians 6.15 In Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but a new creation. That's what matters. He says, this is what matters. Oh, but you need to become Jewish. No, no, no. You need to be a Gentile because those Jews, they rejected Jesus. Well, he says, either one. doesn't matter. God doesn't care. You know what God wants? He wants to see faith. He wants to see obedience. He wants to see a new creation. That's what matters. That's what matters. Live for God. Wherever you are. Wherever you're from. Whatever your background is. Live for God in the state in which you are in. Hence, don't change. Paul gives a second illustration. After speaking of uh, circumcision and uncircumcision. And he's going to talk about slavery and freedom. And this one is a bit different from the previous one. Because you choose if you want to be circumcised or uncircumcised. While in this case, it's an example of somewhere where you don't have a choice. If you're a slave, you're kind of stuck. Verse 20. That each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Okay, got it. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. I think this should be an encouragement to those people who are in impossible situations. I don't know what I'm going to do. The situation is so bad and there is no way out of it. There is nothing I can do to change it. Paul says, you can still serve God where you are. I know it's not the ideal. I know things are not comfortable. They're not nice. But even for a slave here, he says, I mean, if you can get out, he says, that's fine. If, if for some reason your master grants you freedom, take it. But if not, honor God where you are, even as a slave. Last week we were talking about uh, witnessing to Muslims. Greg. And uh, what do you do? If a Muslim guy gets saved, who's already married to four women, what do you do? Do you divorce three and throw them out on the street? Who've been living with you and taking care of you for years and having children with them and everything? No. You say, well, some messes can't be fixed. It is what it is. It is far from ideal. But in the mess that you have already found yourself in, stay where you are. Stay where you are and try and be as holy as you can in this mess that you have made. This is the case in so many places. It's, it's a bad situation. There's nothing you can do. But you know what? Where you are right now, forget what you've done in the past. This is where you are right now. Live for the Lord now.
the best you can in the situation where you are in. Paul here is dressing slaves and he says, don't worry about it. He says that, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't be concerned about it. If you can be made free, that's fine, but he doesn't address freed men directly. I guess they wouldn't want to switch from being free to being slaves, but either way, he says if, you're, if you can be free, do it. If not, don't worry about it. Serve the Lord from where you are. Verse 22. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Likewise, he who is called while free is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Do not become slaves of men. Before he was saying, circumcision, uncircumcision, either one, doesn't matter. Now he says, slave, free, neither one changes your fellowship with God. If you're free, you can have fellowship with God. If you're a slave, you can have fellowship with God. You know, if you are, if you are a slave to a person, you actually have a bigger problem. The biggest problem that every person has is that they're a sinner at enmity with God. And Paul says here, if you're saved, you were bought at a price. Christ paid for your sin with his own blood. And that is way greater. That is a great, that being enslaved to sin is something way greater than being enslaved to a human being. So, in one sense, you're free in Christ. You are free from your sin. You are free from hell. You are free from death. You are free to serve Christ. Even as a slave, you're free to serve Christ. And then he turns it around and he says, and to you free people who are not slaves. If God saves you, just because you're free doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. You are bought with a price. Christ died to redeem you. Which means that now you belong to Him. You're His slave. You think you're free. Yeah, but you belong to Christ. You do what He tells you. He's your master. You're His slave. So you can't just do whatever you want. So, it's interesting here. Christians are both slaves and free at the same time. We are free from sin. We're free from the slavery of sin. And... Now we're slaves to Christ and righteousness. And he says, so don't become slaves of men. I don't think that's literal, by the way. When he says, don't become slaves of men. I mean, it could be literal too. But I think what he's saying is, they have all these people, there's all these people who are trying to get them into bondage, saying, you, oh, you... You should get divorced, or you shouldn't be married, or uh, you should get circumcised. You should do this, otherwise God won't accept you. And he's like, don't become slaves of men. Don't let people put you into bondage like that. You, you know whose slave you are? You're, you're Christ's slave. You obey Christ, never mind what all these other people are telling you. I think that's his point there. And he's going to close again. Well, he's not going to close because he goes on talking about marriage afterwards, but... Again, verse 24, Brethren, let each one remain with God in that state in which he was called. Question. Is marriage important? Sure. But it's not the most important thing in the world. Is being single important? Yes. But it's not the most important thing in the world. Is your economic state important? Yes, it's important, but it's not the most important thing in the world. Does your ethnicity matter? Yeah, it matters in a number of situations, but it's not the most important thing in the world. The most important thing in the world is your relationship to Christ and obeying Him. To change your external circumstance. Let's think, let me close with this. Let me close with this. Because this is a gospel issue here. Changing the circumstances around you doesn't make you more acceptable to God. Because just, let's think about it. Imagine if we said, well, you're more acceptable to God if, you're, if, you're, if you believe in Jesus and you're married. Really? 
No, no, no. You're more acceptable to God if you believe in Jesus and you're single. You're more acceptable to God if you believe in Jesus and you have, make a lot of money. No, no, no. You're more acceptable to God if you believe in Jesus and you have a little bit of money. That's all wrong. You're accepted by God because of Jesus. End of story. Plus nothing. It's trusting in Christ, following Him. That is what matters. It's not the things around you. It's Christ alone. So follow Him wherever you are, whatever the situation in your life is. Even if it's difficult, and I know for many people it is, He says, these things should not be a hindrance to obeying Christ wherever you are. So stay where you are.